Okay, hello everybody. We're back today. We're doing a problem that's in front of you. It's a three mass system. One of the two, one of the three masses is on top of the table, but the other two are hanging on either side of the table, connected to the center mass number two uh, with ropes and there's a pulley on either side of the table. So our objective here today is to find the acceleration of this system and also the tension in each rope. The left hand rope is tension number one and the right hand rope is tension number two. So let me go ahead and well actually before I start solving this problem I think this is a really good opportunity uh, an exercise for you to pause the video now and see if you can figure out the solution. So go ahead and pause the video now before you watch the solution. Okay, now that you're back, so the solution, first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna put all the forces on this system. So let's change colors here. And we've got M1G going this way. We've got FT1 going that way. We've got FT1 going that way. We've got M3G going this way. We've got FT2 here. And we also have FT2 there. Now remember, there's one other force that we need to deal with, and that is, well, there's actually a couple here. We, we'll put them here anyways. These ones won't affect anything. But we do have normal force on the one on the table uh, that is equal and opposite to the force of gravity on the second one. These vertical forces on this mass don't affect the acceleration because they cancel each other out. Um, but there is one force which we're missing here, and that is frictional forces on the one on top of the table. Once again, let me reiterate, many students ask me, is there friction on the side of the table? Remember what the equation is for friction. The equation for friction is force of friction equals mu Fn. So for the one on top of the table, number two, yes, Fn is equal to mg. But for the ones on the side of the table, number one and three, gravity doesn't pull these things sideways against the side of the table so that they're rubbing the side of the table. There is no, therefore, there is no friction on numbers one and three. Students sometimes incorrectly think that the friction is due to the roughness of the surface. They say, is the side of the table smooth? That's got nothing to do with it. It could be rough, just like the top of the table, but there's no normal force. If there's no normal force, then there's no friction. So, but we still have to decide on the direction of friction on this mass number two here in the center. Now, in order to figure this out, we're just going to have to use a little bit of common sense. We can't do this simply by looking at the picture. We need to look at the numbers. And if you'll notice here, mass number three, mass number three is bigger than mass number one. Mass number one is only four kilograms, and mass number three is nine kilograms. So I think you could pretty much figure out just by common sense here which isn't very common that number three is going to go down and number one being lighter is going to go up so therefore let me change colors once again and I'll choose my direction like this that's my path for my positive direction so now I've decided number three is going down, number two is going to the right, and number one is going up. 
Now, if that's the direction of motion, now and only now can I draw my friction force on number two, which is the only one that has friction. And I'll, I'll do, even do that in green so that it stands out. So now I know that if it's moving to the right, therefore I know my friction force is to the left. Now I can go ahead, change colors back to black, and I'll do summation of the forces is equal to F net for the system for the system. Okay, so I'm not actually going to draw all of these forces because there's so many. Because the reason is, is that I know that the tension forces are all internal to the system. So T1 here, T1 here cancel out, T2 and T2 cancel out. So the only ones really that I have left, so I'll kind of continue this down here, the only ones that I have left are negative M1G, then I also have negative friction, from number two. Then I also have plus M3G. Notice all the other tension forces are internal. So I'm not even going to bother writing them down because I'm just going to end up canceling them out. OK? Now I can set this equal to the total mass. times the acceleration of the system. And now, in my last step, I will solve for A, but I will also replace this equation with the equation of friction. So I'll have negative m1g minus mu m2g. It's important to get the masses correct, OK? Because that's why I'm using these subscripts. Plus, uh, sorry, that's not a mu. That's an m. M3g. OK? And now, actually here, why don't we do this all in one step? We'll say that's equal to, and then we'll divide this all by the total mass. And that's equal to a. Okay, I should, should have put the equal sign here. Now, um, there is one simplification which I can do here, and that is I can factor g out of the numerator. So I could say, and also I'll rearrange it to put m3 first. So I could say bracket m3 minus m1 minus mu m2 times g divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3. So notice I just put the m3g term first minus the m1g minus the mu m2g. And I factored g out of the entire numerator. So there is my answer. And now I can put in my numbers to calculate A. And I have 9 minus 1, which is 4, minus 0.3 times M2, which is 8, times 9.8, divided by 4 plus 8 plus 9. Now I can plug this through my calculator and I will get. So the acceleration ends up being 1.21 in blue meters per second squared. OK, now that I have my acceleration, let's 
come here and try and find the tension. Now, the tension, um, I don't want to pick mass number two to figure out the tensions because on mass on the free body diagram of number two, I have one, two different tensions. I cannot solve for two unknown values with one mathematical equation. So it would be a mistake for me to choose this. Instead, it's much easier for me if I go with mass number one and mass number three to calculate the two different tensions. Um, now, if I calculated T tension number one from mass number one, I could use, I could then use mass number two, but then I run the risk that if I make a mistake in tension number one, I could also get tension, the other tension number two wrong because it would be dependent on tension number one if I chose this. However, by choosing one and three, my calculations for the two tensions are independent and I could still get one of them wrong but the other one right. So I think that's safer and also it's easier to do because the free body diagrams are, um, I think, well, not really, not really easier because they, they all have two forces on them. Or actually, no, uh, the middle one has three because it's including friction. So yes, it is easier to do one and three. So let's go and do number one first. So here's number one. We've got FT1 and we've got M1G going down. And now this is kind of like separate. Let's do summation of the forces equals F net on now the individual mass. And we'll say, oh, and by the way, our direction here, if you'll notice, up is positive on this side. So that means we have FT1 minus M1G since up is positive. Equal, whoa, equaling M1A. And so calculating FT1, we're going to get M1A plus M1G, which is equal to factoring out M1A plus G. But now that we have the acceleration, we can now plug our value in. Uh, for M1 was 4 times 1.21 plus 9.8 and that gives us so I got 44 uh, newtons for FT1 now let's do the th third free body and we've got FT2 like this and we've got M3G but in this case you see what is different here is that our positive direction is down so we'll go like that positive. Now, if we do summation of the forces is equal to F net, we have negative FT2 plus M3G equaling M3A. And then let's solve for FT2. So we're going to take this whole thing to the other side. And then we'll take this term to the other side and we'll get M3G minus M3A equaling FT2. And now we can factor out the M3. And we have G minus A equaling FT2. And now let's put in our values. M3, I believe, was... 9 
you can see from up here, right there. And then we have 9.8 minus, and our acceleration from over here was 1.21. So we'll just go minus 1.21. And that's going to give us, giving us 77.3 newtons. And that's for T2. OK? And um, so that's the whole solution to this problem. OK? Those are the two tensions. And there was the acceleration in blue near the top.